the Redmi 6, Xiaomi's latest offering in the sub 10K segment looks quite good on the spec sheet. We now have dual rear cameras, a new more powerful chipset, at least on paper, and dual voltage support. But why does it not feel like a step up, a substantial upgrade when compared to the Redmi 5? Well, to answer that question, we have to take a deep dive into the Redmi 6, taking a look at the things Xiaomi nailed and also the corners they cut to get here. So here's a full review of the Redmi 6, C4E Textile. Let's get started. If you do end up liking this video, please don't forget to turn on notifications by clicking that bell icon. It helps a lot and oh yeah, if you're new here, my name's Ash, you're watching C4E Tech and here we have a monthly giveaway, you can check that out right here. So let's start with one of the positives, the Octa-Core Helio P22. Now this seems to be a pretty big upgrade, right? From the 8 1.8GHz Cortex-A53 cores on the Snapdragon 450 to the higher clock 2GHz cores on the P22, I mean 2GHz is greater than 1.8 so it should be a 10% boost and even the benchmark results show that so performance should be better, right? Well, honestly speaking, when we began testing, we weren't that impressed with the day-to-day -day performance of the Redmi 6. But midway through the testing phase, the MIUI 10 update dropped and that improved a whole lot of things. The whole interface went from feeling sluggish to pretty fast and now everything from app opening times to animations and transitions feel pretty smooth and snappy. Gaming though is a different story as the Adreno 506 on the Snapdragon 450 still manages to feel smoother than the Power VR GE 8320 that we have on this MediaTek Helio P22. Of course, no one is expecting to play PUBG at a smooth 30 FPS on a sub 10K phone, but the downgrade in gaming performance might be something a lot of you guys care about. So yeah, thought that's worth mentioning. On the memory side of things, we have 3 gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of storage as the base variant with the higher end variant getting a bump up to 64 gigs of storage for about 1500 rupees more. The Redmi 6 does come with a dedicated micro SD card slot along with dual SIM support so you can always grab one of these if you feel like you're running out of storage. Running off the internals, we have battery life. Now Xiaomi has decreased the battery size by about 10%. But the battery life here remains almost at par with the Redmi 5 thanks to a more power efficient chip and a smaller display. Yep, MediaTek has had a reputation of being battery hungry beasts, especially with regards to idle drain, but the 12 nanometer P22 proved to be quite exceptional. My colleague who did the bulk of the testing for this device ended most of his days with around 20% left in the tank. That's after a day of pretty intense usage, two odd hours of YouTube, one hour of phone calls, and a ton of push notifications from social media apps. Talking about social media, MIUI 10 seems to have much better RAM management than before. The system is no longer killing WhatsApp or Slack in the background, which means no more missed notifications. I'm so happy about this one. Overall, I really like MIUI 10. The new look and the subtle usability tweaks makes life so much easier. I'm not gonna bore you with the details of what's changed with MIUI 10, but if you are interested, here's a card to the dedicated video on that. Now moving on, we have the AI face unlock. It's a tad slow at times, but gets the job done. I didn't particularly mind that since the rear-mounted fingerprint sensor is pretty fast and accurate. And rounding up the software, we have the ad situation. Elephant in the room, right? Well, in the two weeks that we tested the device, we didn't really encounter any ads inside the settings menu. In fact, the only instance of ads that we've seen is this folder that has a bunch of suggested apps inside it. I guess that's okay and it didn't bother us one bit. Oh, and you might have noticed I am using the gesture navigation system. It works great on this tiny screen. You've gotta kinda save all the real estate you can, right? To be fair, 5.45 inches isn't really that tiny. In fact, this is one of my favorite sizes as you can easily reach all four corners of the screen without performing any finger gymnastics. But I know a lot of you guys might be disappointed that Xiaomi has reduced the display size from 5.7 to 5.45. Now the rest though remains the same, it's an 18x9 uh, HD plus IPS LCD panel here. It's got decent colors, excellent viewing angles for browsing Facebook or binge watching uh, videos on YouTube. This display is fine, not much to complain about here. That said, if you are someone who watches a lot of content, the speaker is kind of disappointing on the Redmi 6. The unit itself is pretty loud, but the placement to the back means anytime you place this phone flat on a surface, the sound immediately gets muffled. So I resorted to putting my phone face down on the table most of the time. Not ideal, especially when I couldn't confirm if the Redmi 6 has any sort of display protection. Xiaomi's been totally mum about that since launch. But hey, 
at least we have this durability test to go on. Speaking of durability, let's talk a bit about the build of this device. The small screen size means that one handed usage is easy. The back looks and feels good. The design, well, we've seen this before on a lot of Xiaomi phones, so that's nothing to write home about. Well, I wish Xiaomi had substituted micro USB with Type C, and this low charging is definitely a disappointment. At least we still have the headphone jack. If you guys want to take a more in depth look into the placements of the Redmi 6, car to our unboxing video. For now, let's jump straight into the cameras. We have a dual camera setup to the back, a primary 12 megapixel shooter with a f2.2 lens and there's support for face deduction out of focus. If that kind of sounds familiar to you, that's cause on paper at least, this is the exact same primary sensor from the Redmi 5. The secondary depth sensing unit, now that's a new addition. So let's see how this combo fares. Under bright daylight, this camera does quite well. We have decent levels of detail and the colors are vibrant. HDR works well and the camera manages to bring quite a bit of detail out of the shadows. Low light, well the camera struggles here. The larger 1.25 micron size pixels or the night mode didn't really help as the narrow f2.2 aperture meant the ISO had to be cranked up and almost every shot in the dark turned out to be noisy and lacked details. Portraits though are a strong suit for the Redmi 6. The edge detection is pretty decent for the price and the level of bokeh doesn't appear to be overwhelming. Even the 5 megapixel front facing shooter manages decent portrait selfies thanks to what Xiaomi calls AI Beautify. Now this is another f2.2 lens with 1.12 micron size pixels and HDR support. Here are a few more sa camera samples. Uh, now onto the video side of things, we have a maximum of 1080p, 30 FPS here. There is EIS, but it doesn't seem to be all that effective. Footage looks a bit shaky. Detail levels are okay. Dynamic range is good. The colors look nice. We also have a slow-mo option, but that brings the resolution down to 480p. So with all that out of the way, let's wrap this one up. So here are my thoughts. From the way this video started, you guys might think that the Redmi 6 isn't worth buying, but no. That's not really the case. For 8,000 rupees, the Redmi 6 is a pretty decent device. The cameras are good, the performance too is on par for the price. But if you are looking to upgrade from the Redmi 5, well, that's a huge no-no. I always tell people to wait at least two generations before the update, you know, before upgrading their phone. And this time, well, the predecessor is actually better in some aspects. So it might be a literal downgrade. Uh, not in all ways, but in some ways at least. So I think that is what bugged me the most about the Redmi 6. Not the phone itself, but the direction Xiaomi is taking with the Redmi series. There are too many corners cut here, a smaller display, a lower capacity battery, a MediaTek chip that's about the same or a little lower, especially with regards to the GPU. The upside is the dual rear camera, but even then it's the depth sensing unit that's new. After seeing how good Xiaomi's own edge reduction is with regards to the selfie camera, I wonder if the depth sensing unit, the second camera on the back is more of a marketing gimmick than a need, than a requirement. In a universe where the Redmi 5 didn't exist, the Redmi 6 might be a great buy, but here it just feels rushed, more of a move to capture the offline market. That's just my opinion though. I would love to know what you guys think about it. And in case I've kind of gotten a little confusing, if you're in, a mark, in the market to buy a phone in this segment, you could consider it. But if you already own a Redmi 4 or a Redmi 5, this isn't really worth upgrading to. So are you excited by this phone or would you rather buy something else like the Realme 2, which comparatively looks quite attractive? Let me know in the comments below. And with that, it's now time I bid you adieu. Please share this video with friends and family. And if you can, thumbs up, thumbs down, based on what you felt about this video. Also subscribe and turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon. So thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, my name's Ash. You've been watching C4 Retech and I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.